Schneider, I'm João Lima, editor of the Economy. Here with me I've got Kevin Brown, CTO of the IT division at Schneider Electric. Kevin, thanks a lot for being here with me. Oh, my um, pleasure. What sort of resilience needs to be built into an edge data center in an IoT world? Well, it's interesting because one of the mm. key things that you need to answer is what do you mean when you say edge? Edge mm. has got a lot of different definitions in the, the market, so mm. we actually break it down and do, there's a hybrid cloud environment that mm. most people are dealing with mm. in an IoT world, and they're usually some combination of kind of big centralized cloud data centers, uh, regional data centers, which also could be considered edge, but really where the fascinating thing is happening is around what we call these localized, or very small edge data centers. And I think the resiliency that you've used to see is they would tend to get neglected and be built uh, using kind of the uptime tier standards as like a tier one. And uh, those are the things that we think we see some uh, emerging trends where that type of approach is probably going to need to change. Okay, and then IoT is also a lot about automation. How is automation being used in the data center today and what is it going to look like in the future? Where are we going with automation? Well, it's interesting, it's, you know, automation is, you know, it, it, data centers almost inherently, uh, you know, are pre-configured to run. And, it, and we want them to run and run on their own. Now, where you get into is automation is a lot of trying to make sure they're as energy efficient as possible. And how do you take advantage of uh, the efficiency on the powertrain as well as uh, the cooling system to ensure that you're getting, uh, uh, the energy performance that you should be getting. Mm. Uh, and then when it comes to the level of availability, what sort of levels are we talking about in the micro data center space? So again, if you take a look at localized data centers or micro data centers, mm. uh, traditionally they're built as kind of a tier one. Mm. And if you, we've just published a white paper that goes through some of this, but mm. what we're encouraging our customers to do is take a look at what's the level of availability the impact those data centers have on the overall experience for your customers. Uh, usually those are the employees of the company and, and, and what their expectations are for the performance of the IT systems. So I think historically, we tended to look at the, the large centralized data centers and what's the availability of those data centers and tended to think of the others as server rooms or wiring closets. Um, what we're seeing happen now is that those are starting to be treated like data centers and, and some of the best practices that we've practiced in uh, centralized data centers also need to be deployed in these localized data centers. So do you need redundant power? Do you need uh, redundant connectivity? Because what our analysis shows is that the overall availability of the hybrid computing environment is most heavily impacted by the availability of these localized data centers, which I, I think really is an interesting evolution for the industry. And I think you're going to see more of those be built like a tier three type data center. Okay. Uh, versus uh, the tier one type approach that you may have seen uh, over the last number of years. Okay, then, so we've already mentioned different size of data centers, but focusing on the micro, the localized data center, how is that one going to work with the hyperscale one, with the mothership data center? So again, you know, what you start seeing is, is that uh, as companies are moving towards Office 365 or Google Docs and they're using these hybrid cloud environments, one of the things that you see is there's obviously a dependency on the centralized data center that they've got. There's also, though, there's applications left over that are regional data center. Mm. Um, but what you find is that the weakest link is that connectivity mm. out. So if I'm at a branch office or a, a remote site, you know, the, 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 uh, the equipment that's left mm. on site that is connecting me into those applications becomes very mission critical. Mm. So that actually becomes uh, where you need to be focused on driving your availability up if you want the whole hybrid computing mm. environment to work. Mm. And there's even indications that we might see a future where the big data centers are built to a lower tier level because you can have application failover from one data center to another. Uh, you might see, because of application failover, you might see the large data centers built to a lower tier level than what you might require at the localized data center because that is your single point of failure, so you need to make sure it's uh, well taken care of. So do you think we're looking to a revolution at the tire system that we've been used well, to? Well, revolution's a strong mm. word. I would say, you know, it's more of a natural evolution mm. that needs to happen, okay. that we need to evolve into uh, architecting it more as a system. Mm. Right? So in the past, we, we focused on data centers as an industry, mm. as one device, one location, that, uh, and we defined a failure as being a failure of power to the IT rack. That generally most people tend to think of as a failure. Um, I think what's going to happen with the demographic change of the millennials plus just the criticality of the IT systems, it's going to turn much more into, hey, when I, uh, you know, like the same way when I go and I turn on a light, I expect the light to go on, people will expect that systems will be available. 
Um, so it's going to be much more about what is the user experience, are you meeting the user expectations for that experience, as well as looking at your overall system of data centers, the hybrid environment, and are you getting reliability at all of them? And we're trying to provide some tools for customers in this white paper to help them um, go through kind of a structured methodology to determine maybe you know, which ones should I start focusing on first. Mm -hmm. It's actually interesting that you mentioned millennials. Uh, how much do you think millennials influence the speed up innovation in the data center space? Well, I think it's going to have a tremendous uh, impact on the computing environment and expectations out of computing. So, uh, within the data center space specifically, again, it's going to you know it, it's going to have to start looking like a network of data centers, and we got to understand what is the availability of all of that because um, you know the millennials they're going to represent more than 50% of the workforce by 2025, and if uh, and, and there's a lot of evidence to show that their expectations of IT is going to be much different and. Uh, I can tell you, as somebody with uh, relatively young children, you know, playing games in my house is latency matters, right? and so these are things that are coming up now that, you know, didn't even matter for my generation. And I and I do think this is going to have a real impact on our industry. And then again, so latency, availability. When we talk about the IoT society, so the connected society, the smart cities, smart cars, connected cars, driverless cars, what sort of data availability needs are we talking about for the whole data center? Well, so it's very interesting when you think about driverless cars, if you think about smart cities, what certainly starts happening is, again, I would argue that things that would not have been considered a data center in the past will need to be considered a data center. So um, a driverless car on its own is going to be able to need to have a very fast reaction time. So you simply can't have this model of all the processing happens in the cloud. There has to be processing done locally. And there's storage of data done locally. Um, and, and that's going to be the new reality, is that the, the, uh, the system that's running in your car is going to need to be incredibly reliable, incredibly available, just like our tier three data centers of the past. And I think in smart cities, if you're automating uh, you know, you know, traffic lights, you know, they, certainly most of that computing is going to be happening very localized. And it'll be done in conjunction with a hybrid environment, in, in, in conjunction with cloud level processing. So, um, it's really a tr it's really an interesting wave that's hitting us, and it's uh, uh, you know going from you know thinking that small data centers weren't very important to actually they're becoming incredibly important in this in this new world. Yeah. And then so all this will require new types of energy and cooling technologies and everything else. Uh, Schneider is a huge giant in the energy space. What sort of energy innovations are we looking into in the next couple of years? Because they will be both by the IoT. Well, I think what you're certainly seeing, and I, you know, I can speak for the data center part of Schneider, is that I think what you're starting to see is much more of a merging focus on the application itself. So, uh, I don't want to put in more compute than I need. I don't want to put in more storage than I need. And if we design our infrastructure to fit that, then I got a very vertically efficient system, right? And uh, so I think you're going to start seeing these become very purpose built, almost by vertical. So an oil and gas might need, an oil and gas exploration might need something that's like a high performance computer. Um, but if I'm in a retail store, I may not. So you know, if we know what's going into that retail store, or we know what's going into that oil and gas, I can design different infrastructure to meet, match that. And when we do that, that does get you uh, more productive use of energy. So that we're- uh, So is knowing what you need. New, knowing the specific application, I think, is going to be the big, big thing moving forward, as well as making sure you know there's going to be the ongoing effort to continue to drive energy efficiency in the large data centers. Um, but again, it's where you get these purpose-built you know data centers or localized data centers is where we can make the biggest difference. So uh, the traditional you know division between the IT level and the facility level guys is what is slowly breaking down and probably needs to break down faster. Is we need to design it as a holistic system. Okay, and then, so IoT is huge. It's huge for Schneider. You launched a new brand last year, so life is on. Uh, how much does IoT actually represent to Schneider in terms of business strategy? What's well, your business strategy in the IoT space? Well, it's fascinating. You know, Jean-Pascal Turcois, the yeah. CEO of Schneider, just recently uh, mm. did an analysis and announced that 45% of our revenues today yeah. are being driven because mm. of IoT. And uh, what we know is that there's nothing uh, more important than getting devices that are connected so we can drive more intelligence. And in fact, uh, today at the show, we're announcing Structure On, which is uh, one of our first big steps into um, driving connected devices in the data center so that we can enable better services and better support for our customers. 
So it's a major focus for the company, it's a major focus for Jean Pascal, and it's something that this wave is not like one that's theoretically coming, it's already hitting us. And uh, it's more of how do we enable it as, as quickly as possible. Okay, Kevin, thanks a lot for talking to me. Uh, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit the website on www.data-economy.com.